Yes, here we are, uh, keeping the ball on the ground. Uh, we're good friends at William Hill. Bet £10, get a free £30 bet. Tremendous. We've got the best young player to ever play for Motherwell. We've also got David Turnbull and Kevin Kyle. How are we doing, lads? Um, <laughs> <we're outside. laughs> oh, Hi. Yes, Paul, on you go. Sorry, mate. It's, just, it's an absolute pleasure and honour the day, Si, for the young Prince Si to meet the, the, the king of Motherwell, mate. So it's going to be a real special episode today, mate. <laughs> oh, David, just so you know, mate, we didn't just let any of you on here, mate. Only top players allowed and also Kevin Sheridan. <laughs> 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 How you doing, David? You all right, mate? I'm all good, mate. Just fucking chilling. Not Is that the bedroom? Is that the bedroom? Ah, uh, that's the room, mate. With arms. I can smell it for here, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, what's up, mate? Man. Oh, not a lot, mate. Not a lot. Just fucking woke up, mate. I've just had a couple of bits of toast and a cup of tea, so I'm ready to go. You're looking good, oh, well, big man. I will. Slaney, looking good for you, but here upwards, if you look good, I'm sitting up a pair of pants, big man. Look. Kev's body and Slaney's nose. <laughs> 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 oh, right, David, what are, you doing, uh, what are you doing to keep yourself entertained during the day, mate? I've been doing nothing, to be honest, because <laughs> when it was finished, uh, at the end of the season, I was going to get the pins with my knee, but because we were having a hand down to London about three weeks ago and got them out, so I've just to rest up with them and basically do nothing until I'm able to walk now. So wait, you were back you were back playing and then you had to go and get pins taken out as well? It was going to happen at the end of the season, I was going to get in uh, once the season was done. I'd probably come in pre season, maybe miss a few weeks, so it's probably ideal for me to now to get it get it done, get it out of the road. All right, boys, we need to say before he got injured, we were buzzing off him on the podcast, weren't we? What a player, man. Aye, I must admit, Sai, he's probably uh... Probably the kind of first Scottish player in a long time that the, the, the country's got excited about. Um, huge potential. Um, obviously, I had a wee dig up him on Twitter, but that was just doing to purely having a wee uh, gripe about young players and big moves. So I'm sorry about that, David. I will, I will say this. Will uh, you give him on Twitter? Eh? What did you say on Twitter? I think I said something about just go and sign the fucking deal at Celtic and just go on with playing football or something. But You're fucking right. right. My God, mate. <laughs> but no, Sai, you're right, Sai. We were absolutely buzzing with this boy because obviously it was somebody that we were all talking about at the time. And to see what happened to him and get that bad injury, man, that was a shocker. So I'm pretty sure he's going to come back stronger, bigger, and better because he looks yeah, like he's. I need to ask you, David. See, uh, my favourite thing I seen for you was when you hit it with your right foot, then hit the bar, come back, and then you fucking volleyed it in your left foot. Uh, I went to the bar. Mate, like Sorry, you. Tremendous, <laughs> You're only like technical Scottish player. Like, where does that come from? Did you practice loads as a kid? Was it coaching you got? What? How, how have you got so technical? I'd say it was just practicing. Like when I was younger, I just go at the, the back, at the front, get a ball with my brownies, pubs and all. I'd say as you got older, folk kind of try to coach out you, but it's just kind of I've just tried to do my own thing and use my ability and don't worry. That's it, mate. Do you, Slaney, just we were saying about how well uh, Davy Boy was doing before he got the injury. He was on fire, wasn't he? Oh, Sai, si, absolutely, Sai. I ain't interested in, in, in most football players, Sai, si, but certainly young David Turnbull, Sai, si, I've got a lot, a lot of time for Sai. And what we, we found out last night was that me and David Turnbull actually shared a changing room at one stage, Sai. Si. No way. Davy, have you got any stories for the boys? Because I'm not too sure. I can't really remember it all. I was only a young boy. I was coming in day release. I think I was only in oh, March. Day release from jail? <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Uh, you came in Slaney, didn't you? To keep fit at one point. I came in to keep fit and I remember I'm never the alive. I remember Stuart McCall sat me doing. He went, Slaney, this is your chance to get back in the game, son. He went, I want you to keep the heat doing. By two days later, Sai, I get packed at the club. I had that reserve changing room up in fucking turmoil. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just say, Turnbull and Slaney, have you been cutting your hair with Stevie Cregan's fucking football boots? What was he like, Slaney? Si, 
See this boy here, Si, he's going to go to the very top, and I mean it by the bottom of my heart. I watched his wee documentary, Si, it was, it it was magnificent. It brought a tear to my eye, Si, and um, it's what, Si, I really, really do hope this guy goes all the way. Appreciate that, Slaney boy. Not a problem. Uh, baby, what was he, what was Slaney like when he came in? I remember, I'm sure it was the day I was in, he came in with a pair of boot cut jeans on, with a pair of running trainers. <laughs> and sat down all day reading a book that he'd brought in didn't speak to him, do <laughs> you? You're weirdo! You're weirdo! We are si, absolutely terrorised that changing room, don't you worry about it? <laughs> nah, that's what I talk is, slain of that, slain of that, isn't it? <laughs> Kev, any advice for the young man? When you're a young player, you get a big injury, what are you saying? Well, mate, honestly, it must be, like, I've experienced it, it's horrendous, but... I think you've just got to understand. You've got, you've got to um, accept the fact that it will get better, and you've just got to be patient. It doesn't like he's probably itching to get back and straight into the first team, but they're telling him to slow down, take his time. But just just take the time, be patient, and everyone will fall back into place. Because you know what I mean. Your ability just to disappear just because you've had an injury. Mm-hmm. It's just a confidence thing, and that'll come back with with trust in the knee and getting yourself back to where you were, young man. But that frustrating getting back to fitness after such a long layoff, and then the break happens. It's a bit like Kev going on a diet, and then the Gregs put his fifty percent sale on. It was to be fair. So I was just getting back. I played a Rezzy's game. I came on a few times with the first team, and then I think we were playing Aberdeen the Friday, but then that got cancelled, obviously. And I was hoping maybe next the week after, I think it was Kelly, or the week after that. I'd be back to kind of full fitness and ready to start a game, so wasn't it great at the time? But in the long term, it's probably helped me. I we watched your documentary as well. It was good, wasn't it? We TV star. What did you terrorise the physio when you were uh, when you were injured for all that time? You fucking end up hating the physio, didn't you? Physio? Did I hate him? He got no, it. Did he get terrorised? I know he's he's kind of he's been good, was he? I've always said that he treated me differently to all the other injured boys. Like, at the start, if I couldn't be asked, they'd just send me home or just tell me to take the day off and all that. So he's been good with me, but he's got a bit of banter about him as well. He's been good so with me. How was the when you, uh, when you got injured? So I, I, I'm not, never the lie here, Si, and I, love, I do love physios, you know, Si, because I've spent my time with more physios than anybody in, in, in the football and game side, but certainly we uh, we JP side, a lovely wee guy, but side, it doesn't matter what injury you had, side, he would use elbow treatment. If you had a broken leg, side, his elbow would be in about you, side. So that wee guy, he was a fantastic wee guy, side, but certainly that was the only philosophy he knew of. Mate, I had a physio at, uh, at Swindon, right? Dick Mackey, his name was, it turns out he was never a physio, like never had any badges or anything, right? See, every time you got an injury kit, no matter what it was, just go and have a hot bath. <laughs> Mate, he'd sit in the hot bath for 30 minutes, right? And then I'd be like, Dick, this bath's getting cold. He went, just run another hot bath. Mate, <laughs> four hours jump between baths. Sorry. <laughs> Kev, did you hear any hopeless physios? Aye, the one at Hearts was fucking hopeless, but he's now the first team physio at Aston Villa. Oh, wow. <laughs> it could have been that bad. But no, I just say... Uh... Physios are never physios are never on a on a, on a uh, they're never going to win, are they? Every cunt hates them. Um, but ultimately they'll just try to get you back to um to fitness. But it's, what what got me with physios side was see if you had a, a bad knee, they'd fucking work your upper body. See if you done a serum, they'd work your legs, they had a way of working every part of your body. I thought, is there any chance of a fucking day off? <laughs> no, you're right. David, you've got a return date for tuning, man, he's back. Yeah, they had it done us. 23rd day April or something, but Gaffer put in the chat last night, I think it was, that's saying, just forget that, but it'll be longer than that, and he'll just kind of keep us updated, I think he was talking about pre-season, so, no idea yet. Party time, isn't it? Party time, imagine getting that full time and you're off till next season, man. Oh my God, man. That must be a nightmare for you, David, though, surely, because you, you, you'll, you'll be wanting to get back playing to try and get yourself back in the short window and get that big move you're after. Obviously, you, you must be enjoying yourself at Motherwell. That's, that's without question. But you've got aspirations to uh, to move on to bigger and better things, surely. Uh, I was hoping to get back fit and playing for this time, but I always had my head at the end of the season I need to get them at my knee. So uh, I wasn't sure how fit I was going to be in the summer after it. And then 
this happened, but I feel that like however long the break is going to be, this will give me a good chance of getting back fit and everybody will be the same kind of... Oh, I I know, you're going to be flying, young man. Yeah. Hopefully. What about box sets? Anybody watching any good box sets, Kev? Do you know what I watched, Si? I watched that uh, Tiger, Tiger King. Oh, brilliant, isn't it? Wee Slaney. Tiger, doesn't he? Wait till you see this, man. Keep talking, Kev. Wee Slaney, exotic. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, I see, I'm reading the news this morning, Si, that Donald Trump is going to look into his case and try and get my pardon. So that would be music to my ears getting there. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a better one. Wait till you see us. Oh, Slaney, have you watched it? I've watched it, mate, but I had to turn it off. Because you kept seeing yourself on the telly. It was, it was reminding <laughs> myself of him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you do know when this episode comes out, there's going to be millions of people doing the uh, photoshops with Slaney on the wee Joe Exotic's head. Oh, I can't oh, wait. Slaney and uh, his wee pal Paul have been playing uh, Grand Theft Auto and he's now calling himself Paul the Crim. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually had been playing that. Have you, Grand Theft Auto? You're unbelievable, you don't believe this. That's me now, a, C- a CEO side of a company. <laughs> right, Kev, I've seen you tweeting about it, so we're going to speak about it. Sunderland till I die. Wow. No, it is, Kev. Go on, give us a big rant about your own club. I, mean, I, can't, I, I can't give a rant because it's actually heartbreaking to watch that. When I, when I was in, I experienced such a lot of good. I always experienced a lot of lows, but it's just, see when you, see, you know what got me the most about the whole programme, right? And this might, this will probably end up reaching a paper. There's one guy that sits in with the chairman and the vice chairman. And he's suited up with a Sunderland tie and he's giving out advice. He used to be the guy that was dressed up with Samson the Cat for the match, pre, pre-match mascot thing. So for me, I'm looking at that thing. <laughs> no way. So what, the mascot's running the club? <laughs> the mascot's running the club. <laughs> Mate, well, I'm fucked. I'm, 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 well, see, when I was watching it, right, I was looking at the guy thinking, I know his face. And then I remember when we used to come out in the tunnel, he'd be in the tunnel with his Samson uh, Cat costume on with the hat off, and I think that's him, that's that same guy. No wonder the club's fucked. But it's obviously, he's obviously done well in his working environment. He's, went, he's got promoted from being a cat to a CEO. A fat <laughs> cat. <laughs> Did you watch it, Slaney? Slaney, did you watch it? Yeah, mate. What about, there's one guy that was a hero site, and we've no mentioned him. Who? Ma- Martin Bain. What about him? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the chamber. <laughs> Well, I, who, what player uses the chamber? And he was like, nobody. I mean, who uses it? Martin Bain. Yes, please. <laughs> That's magic. <laughs> Did you watch it, Davey? Ah, I watched it, man. Scary, isn't it? Of that. Madness. But uh, how can they, how can they two guys run the club? Because, uh, see, after, see, at half time, they're carrying the team. I can't no, understand that. Scary, mate, and that was scary. They're carrying the team at Wembley, man, and the manager. I could not believe that. Mate, I, it was, it was, I honestly, it left me speechless. Oh, that one. See, yeah. the, the team, they were, they were probably spot on with what they were saying. I don't know about that, mate. No, but you, you, don't do that. you don't do that. No, you don't do it, but they had a point. They needed to, they were too negative in the, in the final. I know, but can I just say something? Like, what about when he wanted to make, the boy Charlie wanted to make the stadium a light, like a nightclub? That's, I was just going to say that. <laughs> mate, did you know that? Oh, what about the wee boy Luke Nine man? Did you see him? He was doing my nothing. He was like competition. Off the cameras, him man. Ah, he loved the cameras, didn't he? In the ass up, guy. In the ass up, guy. He's that busy wee teammate that fucking does everything by the book. Look, we're gonna do a prank today. No, I'll, I'll just tell the gaffer. Fuck off, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he still sleeps with his bedroom lamp on, didn't he? Right, we're going to next. Right, we're going to go on. Uh, Davy's been playing FIFA with your man Tony Watt. Davy, who's the best player? Uh, I've chucked. Wi Fi's been playing up, and I can't be asked for a straight butter. <laughs> oh, he, he's, is he not unbelievable? Is it so, nah? Nah, he's average. What the fuck? 
you hear him saying that, but ah, he's just good going on and getting the banter, but he's not very good to be honest. I thought he'd be better, you know, our big licks with his channel on YouTube and all that. But who's uh, who's who's the best there was some big names playing, wasn't there? Aye, there was Liam Boyce for Hearts, who else was uh, Martin Boyle for Hibs. If you call them big names, it's up to you. <laughs> I was just going to a couple of big names there, David. <laughs> no, but Christie was playing as well, wasn't he? Ryan Christie was playing. Oh, I wasn't on that night, but I think he was, I. What? So, did he fancy it? I actually get invited inside, but I'm not interested in playing computer games. I'm about the real thing, mate. The total real thing. What's that? Ladies, my man. How's <laughs> 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 Susan? By the way, she went down a storm on the Josh Windass one, eh? We've got a wee thing coming. Um, we've got a wee thing coming up, the both of us. Um, I don't know if it's been delivered yet, but if it is, David Turnbull will be in for a treat later on. Can you give us any clues? Can you give us any clues? Well, Pat Butcher could be in the, 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 the FaceTime side. That's <laughs> what I can say. <laughs> yeah, were you a big one for the old computer games that when you played I had grown men at Swindon that used to lock themselves in a room for three years wife and kids I and was, uh, when I played with Coventry I was addicted to Call of Duty yeah, that was that everyone at Swindon was the same mate mate I was addicted to it I used to I couldn't wait to get him to play Call of Duty I liked this free for all that, that you had to kill everybody in the room and I, 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 I couldn't stop playing until I killed the whole 25 people without me dying so it got to the point where Lynn says to me, it's either the Xbox or me. So she took sh- shipped back up the road to Stranraer and the Xbox got upgraded to a, to a 360 plus one, whatever you want to call it. So, <laughs> but yeah, obviously, obviously I shipped myself, Si, and I put the Xbox in the loft and it's never come back out. That was about eight years ago. Tremendous, mate. Uh, how's Tony been, uh, Davey? Uh, and about the dressing room and that, mother well, good player. Ah, uh, he's been good, I think, since he first came in. You could kind of tell he's got a bit about him, and then he's just about to try to get back fit, I think. And he's scored a few goals, to be fair, so when he's came in, done well. But I think he's just worried about trying to get as fit as he can, and then kick on to there. What's his part like? Part of. Can be good, can be bad, but he loves a question. He tells him something, he just asks you hundreds of questions. Kind of off that. <laughs> did, he talk about the, uh, did he talk about the goal? See, to be fair, I was trying to get out, but he didn't mention it. He was talking about other things in the, in the sitting room, but he says he hardly he tries to you know, speak about it because both cause judge him on that goal, didn't they? Yeah, see, all that, I would not give a fuck if people judge me on that. I wouldn't just would nah. stop talking about it, would you? 100%. Fucking tell everybody. Uh-huh. So then imagine you scored that goal against Barca. Surely, if somebody was judging you on scoring v Barcelona, you'd be absolutely buzzing. Um, I mean, that's what I would talk about. I still talk about the, the goals I scored for Air United and Clyde. So imagine I scored v Barca. Fuck me. May I just go with him, Flaney? <laughs> absolutely zero. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, have you got like a defining goal that you always talk about? Oh, no, none really side. The only one I would ever do was that podcast. Remember what I did and I said I'd scored at Highbury. Oh, so you did. Wow. I would only chuck that one in uh, and probably scored it uh, the Etihad against Man City in the Premiership. I'd probably chuck that one in. But... Oh, if you want somebody to blow your trumpet, young Paul Slane will do it. Oh, oh, yeah, for me. Oh, Mr. Senior, George Slane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, has he gave you a bit since you came about the babe station? That has he called you up? He went, no, no word of a lie. He phoned me, right? And went like that. What are you telling lies for? <laughs> but we've never watched, but we've never watched babe station. So I, I'm no kidding on the amount of times when I was a boy, I used to walk down here and peek my head in the living room and see him calling all sorts <laughs> of numbers. So he's telling lies there. <laughs> oh, tremendous. So, Lenny, you were at Celtic when uh, Tony Watt scored that goal. Were you at the game? <laughs> No, well, I was at the game, but um, I was actually in my famous spell at Partick Thistle. Um, so when I was at Fur Hill, um, Tony Watt was scoring v Barcelona. So you can imagine how my head was feeling that night. Um, no, a magic, magic night. One of the most famous nights uh, at Celtic Park. Um, 
And he's a great boy, Tony. Maybe some people misunderstand him, but no, he's a great boy, Si. What, was he, was he good about the place in that? Was he funny or just... No, it was it was good. It was it was funny. He had the big time shouts and that. Um, but I don't know. Say, si. it seems if he's changed a wee bit now, though, because he's he seems if he's doing a hell of a lot of running. I can't remember Tony Watt being like that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the same, Davey? Are you running all the time? I'm doing nothing. Just no, but like, see, see when you're fit. Are you like? Are you a grafter or are you just just a nah, baller? Nah, just kind of chilled a minute and go to the gym now and again, but it's no something I can kind of thrive off you. What, um, but, see, when you first broke into the first team, like, what, was there a stage where you thought, like, I'm on fire here? It was probably the second half of the season. First half, like, when I just broke through, I think it was October time. I was doing well, scored a few goals, but I always kind of knew I could do more. I was hoping for that to come, and then after the Went a break, came back and I was flying. It was just every every game. Like once Hasty broke through as well, we were just kind of going on the pitch. I was expecting to score two goals or a goal every game, and it was just confidence. I think. See, I love that. See that I was going on the pitch expecting to score two goals every time I went there. I was expecting to have an absolute fucking nuke. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What's the confidence in it? Like if you're playing well, you play better and better but if you have a few bad games it takes a while to come back have you always been like that for, for a centre midfield or all about getting goals in that nah, all the way through the youth kind of, and being the striker or attacking midfield I'll just try to get as many goals as I can because that's gone now for, for centre midfielder for me like Lampard and that like, midfielders want to just pass it five yards all the time and they don't really want to get goals kid I mean, is that down to say uh, like how, how teams set up their formation and that like Whereas maybe Motherwell, they set up, like Chelsea did, they set their formations up so that Lampard and the likes of David Turnbull there, they get the freedom to maybe go forward and score goals. I think a lot of teams nowadays set up where it's more about the idea of scoring and attacking there, but predominantly they would rather make sure that everyone's shored up and it's tighter, if that makes sense. But nah, I don't think, the, big, the strikers always go for the big dose side. You see a goal scoring midfielder? They can go for massive dough as well because oh, of they've got a bit of everything. Yeah, Selena, were you were you worried about goals when you played? Like, did you did you go out there thinking I'm going to score today? No, I didn't. I, I, as I said, when I when I played, so I, I'm no new world delight. I went through. I used to be a finisher uh, up front. I was deadly, and then all of a sudden, my, I don't know what happened. I just couldn't shoot every time I shot. I took the gun, um, and I. I, I I don't know what it was, but as you, we were talking about it in the, the last couple of podcasts. To be, I think to finish and score goals is the hardest thing out there for anybody. And I, Big Kev, I give you a hell of a lot of credit, Big Matt, to put yourself in these positions because I do believe it's the hardest thing in the game to put the ball in the back of the net. No, I know I've asked you that about, about, about goals, but what I'm trying to ask you is, like, see when you were going to play a game, Slaney, what was your what was your thing like? I'm, I'm going to put crosses in. I'm going to beat the take the full back on every time I get it. What was it? I changed it because as, when it was Motherwell, honestly, I was so positive. All I wanted to do was take players on. But as Davey said there, when your confidence can go sometimes, you must change it. So I thought to myself, all I'm going to do is work hard. That's what I said to myself because you can say to yourself, Si, you can say to yourself, do this and do that. And then it doesn't work out and you're left stranded in that pitch, desperate to get t- taken off. So I changed my full mindset, Simon. Yeah. Okay, just on Tony Watt, you ever seen a teammate that's had made a rapid rise into the first team? Kev? Um, probably when I was younger, there was a guy called uh, Tommy Butler. And because I think I mentioned before, and because he was so skillful in the youths and the reserves, they quickly pushed him up into the first team because they didn't worry about his size or, or anything. He just had the natural ability just to get in the first team. When he got into the first team, and it was just a bit here and a bit there, but it was how quick he went from youth team to reserves to first team. We all had to like do maybe 10, 15, 20 games in reserves before we even had a, um, an inkling of getting the first team. But where the seed was, was a few good games of youth team, one good game, the raises, then bang, that weekend he was in the squad. And that, I think that's a manager believing in you. I think they see something in you and you think, right, surely that this kid can handle it. Whereas... Some players like me, I took forever to get in the first team at, at, at Sunderland, 20, 30, 40 resi games. But then you get that opportunity. But some people, 
they've got that wee something that just makes them different, stand out from the rest, that they just go in and look, they look as if they've never been out of the first team, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I see on you, David, I, I spoke to like David Clarkson, Stephen Hamill, and they were, they were telling me like a year before you were playing in the first team that you should have been playing in the first team. Did you need to wait longer than you probably thought you were, you were going to? Yeah, I, the season before I broke through, I felt I should have been kind of playing when I, mean, I was trying to get on the loan, but the gaffer wouldn't let me. So, if it was a good thing, I don't know, but I felt that season I should have been playing. Then I played the last two games of the season, I think. That was when they got to the cup final. Yeah. I was on the bench for that. But I don't know what it was. I think it was just a style of football they were playing that season. And then, like, it wasn't the fit my style. So, even you made that jump up for, like, youth team, uh, first team, were you ripping it up and straight away, or did it take you a while to get going? Well, I... I'd kind of been training with first team for a good three years, I'd say, before I broke in. Like, cause my first season, when I played the 20s, I was on the bench. I think it was the last game of the season. And then then I, made, then I played the season after. And then I was kind of training with them every day. So I was kind of getting in. I was doing well, but I'd still had to bulk up in size and stuff. And then when I went in, I was just kind of, aye, just enjoying it. David, can I ask you something? See when, you, see when you're... Um... You said that you were training with the first team for about two or three years and the manager wouldn't have let you go on loan. Were you being up were you on the bench and stuff for the first team at the time? Or were you were you in the squads or how was that? Maybe two weeks in a row I'd be on the bench and then I was I was like going, feeling like I was ready, but then they wouldn't have put me on. Maybe the week after I'd miss out the squad. It was just a weird one and then I was kinda of wanting to get on loan, I wasn't allowed to, so didn't really know what to do. I can never, I can never figure out that uh, why managers do that. Why they've got young kids who are, they've got, they, they say they've got all the potential and they're going to be this and they're going to be that, but they don't play them. But yet they won't let them get in loan to gain the experience they need to be in the first team. Sometimes I find that confusing. But in your in your circumstances, it's worked out all right for you because you're now playing regularly. You are you, you obviously ripping it up, scoring 15, 16 goals, whatever you did in your thirty five appearances. But it's. Stevie Robinson's probably got a, a thumbs up for that one, but I was just curious to find out if you weren't getting in the team, but training with him, were you in the squad, were you on the bench? But you've answered that, Tom, man. Were you see, in training that, were you like Megan boys, the older boys and that? Did you not care? Uh, I was getting into the first conference, just sometimes just try to do different things and take the piss a wee bit sometimes, but obviously few of them just gonna smash you in that so who, who, who would smash it? The bank days first few times up the first team there's big Mick and that and then Lai and then Aye. And then like Nero when I started playing there was Tom Aldrin and all that, they'd just kinda they'd get annoyed about it that they were doing so well and just gonna try to hit you and stuff. Selena, were you the same when you first started team with the first team? Would you go and take the piss? Another will. Mate, see, I was just about to see that. When I first went to the first team, I believe when I was at Motherwell that I should have been there. And I remember at 15, or was it 15 or 16, I'm sure it may have been 15, that we went away to Austria with the first team, right? I, mean, I was flying. I was, let me just say, I was the best player there at 15 year old. We had Ross McCormack, Bob Malcolm, um, David Clarkson. Who else you want to name? I was much better than the most, but I'm going to see it the new right. And it's a wee bit of a joke, but I was I was brilliant then. But what I'm going to say is, we played against great teams and whatever and friendlies, right? Now I came back, and um, it was in the paper. Mark McGee said he's going to have a big season for us. It reminds me a lot like Robbie Keane when I was at Coventry. I think it was William. Uh, I'm sure it was that. And um, Scott Leach was saying to everybody. And then the next week, I get put to the youth team. And did not dream with the first team, mate, the rest of the season. Why is now, that? Well, it was the most bizarre thing. Somebody, somebody said that I was out a night out, mate. I had an out when I was at Motherwell, so that was a lie. But that's how bad it can be. What we're talking about, young players, they're showing great promise, and then they just disappear after finishing there. No, listen to this one. So that full season, I never played a game, and then the last game of the season, the week up to it. My contract's running out, and Mark McGee pulls me in and says, I'm going to start you. So I said to Big Dingus, I went, you've not played me all, all year, or let me in about the team. 
And he went, that's my decision. I'm the manager. So he was obviously just doing it, Si, for me to sign the deal. Big dingus, man. Here's one for you, right? <laughs> this isn't all that rapid rise or that, but when I was, at, uh, I signed a three-year deal when I was 16 at Celtic. And then on my 17th birthday, only like half a year into my three-year deal, uh, Tommy Burns and uh, Strachan and that came and says, we want you to sign a four-and-a-half-year deal. A new deal, we'll rip that old one up and we'll give you a four-and-a-half-year deal, better money, we'll be training with the first team, stuff like that. So, signed a four-and-a-half-year deal. Uh, next day in the paper, it was like three pages into the back, it said, uh, the next Petrov is not very far away. And then it says, kid Simon signs four-and-a-half-year deal. So, get up to lunch that day and fucking dreading the first team reading that, do you know what I mean? Uh, so we're all sitting and Big Sutton picks up the paper and I, I'm watching him. I'm at the reserve table, he's at the first team table. And he gets, I could see him on the page and he starts laughing at himself. And he, st- he goes, the next Petrov is not very far away. He says, that's fucking disgusting what they've wrote about you, Stan. They must really have <laughs> that paper. <laughs> that was magic. But, 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 but Petrov, bang on, but Sutton, man, absolutely ended us. Yes, see, uh, see, big dingus, big Mark McGee, I remember, right? Me and Bob McHugh were standing outside the lunch hall, 15-year-old. But Bob was a boy from Mary Hill, he's standing, right? Outside the lunch hall, he's horns doing his shots. No, he wasn't, he, he was just standing like that, sometimes when you stand like that. And uh, Mark McGee walks around with a couple of Americans, I don't know what they were, who they were, I think they might have been maybe looking to buy a club, I don't know, and Mark McGee walked in, and Mark McGee looked at Bob in front of the two Americans and went, you better take your horns at your boys, you clatty bastard. <laughs> 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 so, unbelievable. Bob was shaking up, man. <laughs> that that dingus, so amazing. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, we're going to talk about the Motherwell youth system. What a system. Brought it through the likes of Paul Slayton, David Turnbull. What's so good about it, Davey? How, how are they producing players? I don't know how to answer that to be honest uh, it's just kind of all the way up I don't know what is did you join it actually I joined it um, the end of primary seven and my, my, it was it was just amazing um, the coach the, the, at, at that time the standard of coaches I don't know what it's like now Davy Boy but I remember then you had Chris McCart Gordon Young the standard of coaching was unbelievable and uh, but that's the way I believe Scottish clubs should be because They've no got a lot of money, so you should really invest in your youth, bring them through, and then sell them on. And then, of course, we'd love to see younger players staying with these clubs, but it's just not the ideal world we live in. You know what I love about Motherwell, though, that all the ex-players are now coaching the youth teams. I think that's brilliant. When I was at ah, Celtic, it was guys like that's... Willie McDay, Jim McAnally, Tommy Burns, Owen Arch, Deacon, Danny Craney. They'd been there, they played for Celtic. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be a player to be a great coach. Obviously, you need to be good at the coaching as well, but... Just having the people coaching you, David, the boys that have been there and done it, it makes a big difference for me, no? Aye, uh, that helps. To be fair, it was kind of Hammy and Clarkie and Faddy, they were all coming to the end of their career. And then, once I signed full-time stuff, it was Craig's. He took the 20s and he helped me a lot. Uh, one of them really well and he kind of... His training was really good, I thought, as well, and just kicked me on as a player as well. Well, did Faddy ever give you any wee bits of advice? Because obviously he's a similar sort of player, just try things on the pitch, don't really give a fuck. Uh, well, when I first kind of met him, he was coming in training with the 20s just to get fat. And it was a joke. It was just Megan for, Megan Pope for fun. And then I think he signed again as a player manager or something. And then he'd kind of talk to you then, just tell you to be confident and just do what you're doing. Your ability will shine through. But... He was brilliant with us. And a few was, he still, young boys was, was he still brilliant when he was chairman of the twenties, huh? I come in. I think I get megged about three times in his first session. Yeah, I the pass it, boys. And then done it the first team as well. I mean, once it was, I think it was Hearts were playing at home. He was a player assistant manager or something. Getting pumped free now. I think it was the last ten minutes. Somebody said I want to have a free kick and they put it in the top corner. Yeah. <laughs> see, see at Motherwell days, the boys still do all the jobs. So when I first went in at 15, um, we used to be in, it'll be similar to you, Kevin Sai as well, but I don't know if it still happens now. Did you just do, need, do you still need to go in and um, be in there for eight o'clock and you don't leave to about five and you're doing all the jobs around the stadium? Does that still happen? I wouldn't say so much now. When I first went in with Craig's as a coach, 
he usually have his in at about, for about nine to about four o'clock. Can he do all his jobs, can up the gym and clean all the boots? But no. I think they try to do it a wee bit, but the boys have got their boots today and clean them, but you don't really see them do much else to be honest. Uh, Selena, how was Craig and you when you were a young cheeky wee bastard? I'll never forget this one where me and Bo McHugh were up in the gym. Um, I don't know if we were meant to be training with the, the youth team and we carried on, we were injured, I don't know. And Craig came up to the gym, seen what we were kicking a ball about and ran down to Mark McGee and Graston is for kicking a ball. So that sums up Stephen Craggs. <laughs> <laughs> not, a man for, not a man for me he was actually very nice for me at Motherwell a really really good man do I like him technique? no do I like him as a pundit? no let me move on Colonel <laughs> 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 right, how's, uh, how's David Clarkson's hair looking? remember for Clark oh. was for years that's what uh, Clarkson's hair's like isn't it? <laughs> oh, he's not got much left has he? I was texting him last night actually he's some man Clark isn't he? Ah, he's a great guy. What a man. Kev, your hair's a bit like uh, Albion Rovers' goal mouth. <laughs> Aye, it's a wee bit... Uh, it's actually sad. It's getting worse, mate, honestly. I've... Uh... Put your head down. Ah, oh, mate, I can't wait a minute. Wait a minute, let me see if I can go. That? Oh, fuck. Yeah, not a spot. <laughs> honestly, it's fucking... It's actually stressing me out because the hydro's been obviously suspended, so that point when I had done in London Harley Street for a new haircuts and put on a back burner. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, I think I'm just going to go, sh- the next haircut side is a big one. I might just shave it all off and that's it, I, it's gone forever. I think you suit a skinhead, I see the pictures. No, I, I look hard as fuck and I'm no hard at all. Oh, I know when you're hard, young man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. What is that? What you think here? The ginger Morelos, my man, not a problem. Ah, for Shelby. <laughs> oh, tremendous. Right, when you ask you about Stephen Robinson, Davy, uh, I've heard he's a, a tremendous coach, is that right? Ah, uh, he's been really good. He knows the game well. He's kind of, his training session, I love his training. Do you think he's made you a better player? Yeah, uh, definitely. He'll take the credit for that as well, he always says that. But Does he say that, huh? Ah, he's like, remember who made you? <laughs> Selena, you said that to you coach as well, didn't you? Oh, I say that all the time. Oh, mate, all the time. Big Dingus used to say that to me as well. Oh, I used to slap <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Can you lose it to Stephen Robinson? He looks like an angry wee guy, man. Uh, after a game, you know, it's like a few beat or something, like, maybe singles out a few boys. Has a bit of a rant, but then the next day in training, they'll can they come out of it and they'll be sound you, which is good as well, I think. Even though you're the golden boy, do you get it as well? Towards the end of last season, they didn't give me anything there, nah, but when I broke through, I think, I think he was living away. I think he was shouting on at me or something, and then I shouted back, but he thought I shouted back, fuck off, twice or something, and then they, they came in the change and just lost that me after that. But, I was sitting shaking myself. <laughs> so, did you used to shout back at managers? All the time. That was my worst trait. Even senior players, I remember getting into like a first team 15 year old and telling players to fuck off. See, uh, see, the can on me, even the shout at you, right? I remember one game I was playing like, and I thought, started off quite well, 15 minutes into the game, and he shouts me over on the side of the pitch, and he's like, ah, you've got fucking five minutes to liven up or you're coming off. I was like, ah, what? Mate, see for the rest of the first half, I was fucking shitting myself, man. I was actually doing all right. Uh, what about uh, Slaney? Uh, Keith Lasley's there as well, assistant manager. Another player. Did you know you still have barbecues every summer for all the team? All the boys. Well, that's the first half. I must have never got invited. <laughs> Somebody says you put your face on the barbecue. So I think it was me worried what I was going to do with the sausages. And you know exactly what I would have done. Right up. Uh, right anyway, Si. But Keith Lasley... Uh, Amazing. Him and Steve McGarry and McCormick, absolutely amazing about the place. Brilliant with younger players as well. Now, that year I was maybe near the end, Simon, that they still they were still terrorise younger players, but it, it really, really blossomed you into the, a first-team player that you'd have became. It was, it was absolutely great, guys. You like Lasley? Yeah, uh, he's a good guy. He's done well in coaching as well, I think. He's 
kind of turned into a good coach, but played with him a few times, maybe pre season games was that as well. He was good with the boys. Is that right about the barbecue show? Ah, uh-huh. well, uh-huh. I'm a bit of a barbecue. Used, used to get them around at the end of the season, have noise, kind of hammy and all that, cocky. Just get pushed, I think. <laughs> Oh, that's what it's all about. Uh, right, Slate, uh, Davey, good dressing room, funniest characters, who are you saying? The new or past players as well? Uh, both, give us both. Pat, we'll go past first. Ah, I can't think, man. Like, last season, Ross McCormack, he was nuts. Of course, for what, man. Jesus, he's a Ross McCormack story, come on. It was last year when we went to Tenerife pre-season. Yeah. Gaffer was like, alright, need to go out, need to do this. I think there was about 14, 15 boys going to snuck out at night and then Veronica's. And then I just remember sitting with him. It's about well, everybody was on the table, but I was sitting next to him. And he's buying all the drinks and all that, whatever. And then he's dropped a 50 note. And I've looked at it in the grunt. He's like, did I take that or did I tell him? I'm like, alright, I'll tell him. Ah, Ross, you dropped that, mate. He's like, oh, fuck sake, you know. He's like, don't worry about that. I've dropped me. I'm getting off the bus. Yeah. Did I see you on Ross McCormack? Yeah. You know, he's breaking into the first team. I remember, right? We're doing the warm up, and uh, see Rab Thompson. He's, I think he's at Celtic now, the fitness coach. Three fingers. Well, he hates you, mate, after you said about his handshake. Did they hear it? <laughs> But no word a lie, Ross McCormack used to, when he was setting up the warm up, Rab, he, Ross McCormack used to just zing balls and hit his seat right every day. So it, it got worse, he used to then start wrestling to the ground. Every, I mean, this was every warm up, but Rab, just take him down. And then I'll never forget it. It was a, it was a winter's day, and Ross McCormack had a bit of ice. I right beside each other and smashed Rab right in the face, right? And Rab got a bit of ice in his eye. He started greeting. I'm not, I couldn't see for about 10 minutes. It's a, it's a terrible story, but that was what Ross McCormick was all about in the warm ups. <laughs> oh, how good was his technique, though? What Roscoe's technique oh, was a joke, man. Oh. When we were in Tenerife, he was, I think he came and he was just injured. And this goalie coach took him through a separate shooting drill and must have had about 20 balls and they all went in top corner. Mental. Uh, we used to play against him in the youth team and he, he, I was obviously at Celtic like, he was a couple of years older but he was at Rangers mate he was frightening man oh mate what a player he's made a few quid haven't he okay, have you played against Ross McCormick now you know what Si I don't think I ever did I, play, I played with him in the in a Scotland squad um, and just that like it's a shame like so much ability and he's had a right good career but he could have had a a longer career He's just obviously seemed to have things no work out for him since he left Aston Villa. But um, no, Ross McCormick guy, one one of the guys side that will look back and think, you know what I mean? Could have been could have been a right top top career for a long oh, time, oh. not just for the time he had. I know what you're saying, mate, but he's had what about five years in the championship that he was. Oh no, un- Sorry, he was, it was, you know the the championship's most expensive sign at one point for was uh, it Fulham to was it Fulham to Villa? No, I think it was Leeds to Fulham, wasn't it? Aye, whatever else. You know, like, like, like 12 mil. 12 mil, mate, you're right. Uh-huh. I don't know, so no, I was See, when he came on uh, for pre-season, baby, did he still did he still have a bit? Yeah, when he came, it was January he came, but he was coming, he was just coming back to an injury, I think, but he was, you could tell he was top. So he did he tell you about um, being late, not being able to make training because he's gates with no one? Did he tell you about it now? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'm not saying about that. <laughs> Somebody told me he didn't even hear Gates at his bit of ice. What about uh, is Trevor Carson still a nutcase, David? But, uh, have you seen him while drinking on Trev? Seen him ten or he's still while drinking him, why? Been out with him a few times. Yeah. Fucking nuts, isn't he? Mate, he is the monk for a mean machine, isn't he? <laughs> what a guy, though. Scary. I'm scared of him, but. Mate, he's a hero, but see one Christmas do at Portsmouth, he was properly going to punch my head off, eh? like offered me a square to go outside. Absolutely shit myself, man. You can lose it, can't you? Angry man, eh? What's that? 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 What's that?
I know Trevor. Trevor was in Trevor was in the youth team when I was at Sunderland. When I was in the 19s, he was in the 17s. Oh, so he was. That's what he came to. What were you like then, Ken? Oh, he was a madman then. Uh, big Rangers fan. Uh, but he uh, he loves the show, Si. Loves the show. Wants to come on. <laughs> David, tell me about uh, Pete Hartley. Big Pete. Aye, because I, 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 Big Pete was in the youth team, the, the under-17s, when I was in the first team at Sunderland. And uh, he was having himself then, but he was fucking hopeless. I'm surprised he actually made it to the level of Motherwell. <laughs> <laughs> I'll no comment on that then. Oh, so you're going to agree with me then? He's fucking hopeless. Is it for Red Car? What's that? He's for doing like Middlesbrough, are we, isn't he? Aye, uh, Hartlepool, I think, near there, is it? Is it Aye, it's Hartlepool. I tell him to me, he's fucking hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's, a, he's a hard bastard to know. Nah, fucking hard to look at, Si. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, if you're not having him, are you big man? No, I don't, I don't oh. mind big Peter Hartley. I just, I'm just going to be a bit of banter, eh, Slaney. He'll uh, hopefully watch the show and he'll, he'll see that it's just all humour. But uh, in all honesty, he's hopeless. Uh, right, anyway. <laughs> uh, third in the league. What a season. If the season was to finish tomorrow, would you, would you be happy with third, obviously? Huh? Well, I'd take it. Math, no? Oh, definitely, mate. Is that using Europe in that, huh? I think it is, aye. Whatever happens. If it finishes in third place, what not be? I'd take it. I'll be it, huh? Kev, definitely the third best team this year, Motherwell, nah? Sorry, just give me two seconds, mate. I've got to do it. Do I you're spot on. Motherwell have been the third best team. I thought it was going to be. Because he asked me to be the Hibs. Just eat my. Just eat my. Sorry, boys. Fit dog and walking. What were you saying, Slenny? Motherwell, third best team this year for me as well. Aye, he, they really have. I, I thought Hibs were going to come and pip them, but. Motherwell have been absolutely excellent. They really have. Kev, what about you, big man? You seen Motherwell the best, the third best team? Slenny because. See when they, when teams like Hibs and Hearts and Aberdeen who are expected to be in the top the top four, top five every season, the fact that Motherwell probably on a lower budget than most of those teams put together, the fact that they are sitting third, but they've been consistent, Motherwell. Um Hearts and Hibs have dropped loads of points against some right rubbish teams and so has Aberdeen, but Motherwell's been grinding at results every other week. And you look at their squad, you look at some of the names in their squad and stuff and it, for me, they shouldn't be sitting third, but they've got a, obviously a great manager, Stevie Robinson, and they've got some right good, talented individuals in the team, and they look like they work as a team, and probably that's why they've been consistent and they're sitting third, and, and rightly so. Does that annoy the boys at Motherwell, Davey, when I hate when people always say, oh, Motherwell, I just have to beat, because uh, going forward, they're brilliant. I think it was just that season when they got to the to cup finals, because the way they played then, and then I think it kind of changed the last season. Folk can they, some people who maybe don't watch they'll just think even they go to the final but certainly try to play a bit of football now we're going to go on to the, the stuff that everyone wants to know about the Celtic move and if you want to ask him a question about the Celtic move when he first heard of that baby boy you're in the same boat as me mate it's, it's one of the toughest decisions you could get mate <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Davy. I didn't hear it. <laughs> the fucking hope not. Be in the same boat as you, Slaney. Who's train? Go on, Slaney. No, ask him. See when? Did you listen? Let's go. Did you want to go to Celtic when they came in for you? Aye, I did. But that's when did you first hear it? When did you first hear that they were they, they were interested? There was always kind of rumours about the about the home and then me and a few of the boys for the Rezies, we were in MAGA in the summer and it just kind of kicked off there. Every day it was getting mail and mail and then I think it was about five days in I had to come home. It was Celtic it fans everywhere just pissed on me and all that. Oh, you see, when you're in Magaluf and you get a phone call that's certainly like want you, do you get me? Do you get a bottle of champagne or that? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be going losing my fucking melon, man. Magaluf, great choice of summer vacation. Honestly, oh, 
I'm just trying to figure it out. You were hearing that, but you're going, Matt, were you going wild over it because you thought this is happening? Are you buying boys drinks or not? Aye, no, aye, no, can I? It's missed a few of them, are can I all say, like fans, so they were all buzzing as well. But in the hotel and all that, in our rooms, we'd be kind of having banter about it. But then once we went out, it was Celtic fan after Celtic fan just came up to me asking when I'm coming and all that. It was madness. Kev, any questions for Davey on the Celtic move? Aye, just obviously when it all the, the rumours and that started filtering around the Magaluf and stuff, what was your mindset? What were you thinking? Were you desperate to try and get it done and, and get, get it signed, or were you just quite laid back about the whole approach? Or Obviously, you said you came back five days early, but that was down to probably being annoyed by Celtic fans. But were you in your head, were you thinking, right, that's it, let's get this done, phone your agent, let's get this wrapped up? Or were you quite laid back about it, David? I was kind of chilled about it, to be honest. Uh, I came home, so I had to do it. just the situation it was in. But then, once I was saying, I was kind of chilled, just leaning it down to my agent. And then everything just kind of kicked off of there. So when did you hear about it? When was it? Who was the English team? Norwich. Norwich. Norwich, aye. Yeah. So when did you, did you already spoke to Celtic and then you get a phone call saying Norwich are in for you as, as well? So I'd been speaking to Celtic for about a week and a half, two weeks maybe. And then, but we were still just trying to agree everything. And then, my agent, there was still clubs on to my agent and then he's just like, it was just out of the blue really, I think he was on the, Monday or Tuesday, I went down to Norwich on the Wednesday, the Monday or Tuesday, next, my agent phoned me, he's like, my love have accepted a bid for Norwich as well. He's like, we need to go down and have a look at that day. Who was the Norwich manager? Is that Fark in it? I think. Oh, I had Ron Jeremy, so it is. It was Stuart Webber, the chief exec, I think. I think he's not him. Davey! You never signed for Norwich because you said the senior is the next Gary Holt. <laughs> the first time off. <laughs> Sorry, what were you going to say? David, who would you, would you rather sign for Celtic over Norwich? Uh, no comment. But see, see, <laughs> that, see that, right? For me, obviously, I would be Celtic because I'm a Celtic man, but a lot of players maybe would rather go down uh, to, the, to England. Kev, what about you? And that's the Good question, Selena. I think that um, sometimes what happens is that, that when there's an opportunity to go to the Premiership, first and foremost is the money and the glitz and the glamour of the Premiership. But for me, talking to David now, getting to know him a wee bit better, I think he's quite a level-headed guy. So I think he probably thought that Celtic would be the better move because if he goes to Celtic, if he's performing well for Motherwell, he's going to perform outstanding for Celtic. He's going to be sticking it like a, a big fucking sore thumb and then that move to England will come eventually anyway and he'll be far more experienced, far more advanced whereas he could have went to Norwich for the money and the rabbit and the headlights and all that nonsense and might have got lost down there in terms of if he didn't play and he's sitting picking up his wages but no playing whereas at Celtic I think he would actually have got like more of an opportunity to, to enhance his, his, his reputation as a footballer um, ah. but it, it's one, but for me, he seems like he's switched on enough to, to make a correct decision and a decision that's based on his career rather than a financial package. Where well, I obviously had why, a great why did you pick, on Kev's point, then why did you pick Celtic then, David? Start with, I think it was just because how long it'd been going on with Celtic, my heart was going to say it on going there. Like when I didn't in Orich, it was like. I was still kind of thinking Celtic, Celtic. It was just really, I had my mind going down there. Like, I kind of wanted to sign with Celtic, but I said my documentary as well, that thing that when I was speaking to Norwich, they kind of never changed my mind, but it was just how long it went on, I think. But I wanted to go there. Because I, I, I interviewed Joel Edley, and he said that as soon as he spoke to Lenny, he knew Celtic. Similar to what you said, as soon as you spoke to Lenny, his heart was set on signing for Celtic. Was it Lenny that you were speaking to over those couple of weeks? Nah, uh, it was the first time I spoke to him. I was with my mistress, Da, playing golf. And then, I think we were on the 13th floor or something, and then he phoned me, missed out that hole. That was the first time I heard to him, and he was just telling me I was going to play and stuff, and it was brilliant with me. It was kind of everything I wanted to hear, and then... 
and only the rest of the golf man fucking had a shambles every hole. <laughs> Bye. Can I just ask you, a young player came up to you and said Norwich and, and Celtic, who would you recommend them or advise them to go to? Who would you rather see them go to in that um, instance? So if I was David Turnbull? No, so if David Turnbull came up to you and said, I need your advice, would you want me to go to Celtic? Who would you rather me to go to Celtic or Norwich? Who do you think would be the best move? Celtic, 100%. 100%? Yeah, Norwich. Right. For me, there's not. I've played at Norwich, mate. You're playing in front of fourteen thousand people. Mm. It's fucking bang. It's, you didn't. I played at Norwich, mate. There's no one that I came away thinking, oh, wow, well, wasn't that I played at Carroll Road? But yeah. to go and play in front of sixty thousand on European nights, that mate. The, the memories when I speak to people in interview, especially, they are the things that they remember at the end of their career, mate. And no going playing for Norwich in front of fourteen thousand people. Well, I love that, Simon. I see, I would say the good question. I, I would agree that if you go to Celtic and you perform as the way you'd hope to perform, you're not going to a Norwich after Celtic. You're going to a bigger team after that. Not a bigger team than Celtic, but a bigger club than Norwich. Downside, if you get what I'm saying. You go to Norwich and say it doesn't quite work out at Norwich. You end up going down the way. Whereas with Celtic, you can always leave Celtic and go to a Norwich for me personally. That's how I look at things. Yeah. So, David, did you train with Celtic? No, nah, it was it all happened on the Friday, done my medical on the Friday. And then I thought I was waiting on them announcing it and all that. No, I done my medical on the Friday after I'd signed everything subject to medical. So done an met Lenny and all that and just kinda of done an interview with Celtic T V, got all my pictures took around the stadium and shit. And then hadn't heard them the Friday night and then Lennon texts me, he's like, just come in Saturday morning, do a wee bit. So, I'm like, sound, went in, spoke to the secretary or something, then had a meeting with Lenny for about 15, 20 minutes, and then the physio was like, nah, he's, he's not allowed to train, so I just came up. So, didn't get to train, no. See, can I just ask you something, this is what I'm desperate to know. See when you thought the deal had been agreed or not, be honest. Had you been looking at like houses and cars or not? Really, no really, no really looking at anything, but I had my head. I'd be the exact same. So, Kev, okay, that must be the worst feeling, eh? Oh, sorry, honestly, I, I think back to it when, when I read that story, and obviously I was thinking, fucking hell, that poor guy. He's like, I, I'm not worried about it because I think he'll he'll get there eventually anyway in the future. That I don't think that's in question, but. I remember when I was at Sunderland, si, I was on a right few quid. No, no, a right few quid, but a good wage. And then Crystal Palace came in and offered four million quid for me. And, and they said, and I said to my agent, oh my God, man, that's a lot of money. So what kind of wages are we getting there? She said, oh, maybe about 14, 15 grand a week. I said, right, wait, mate, we need to push this through. So I'm trying to get him to push the deal through. But Sunderland came back and said, no, you're not going there. We are going to give you a new contract offer and we're going to keep you here. I was like, no bother. This is take my time doing the, 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 the contract. Two weeks into pre-season training, my hit went and never played for Sunderland again for 20 months. And the contract was gone and, and that was it. That was how it was. And it was shit, but I had a good career and I moved on and things were fine. But David Young, he's 20 fucking years old, Si. He's got the, the, the move to Celtic or whatever it may be that in the future, that will come. But I'm just thinking in this situation now where everybody's getting followed with wages and things like that, had he been at Celtic signing... Life would have been a wee bit more comfortable, a wee bit less stressful, but he's You'll got get the there, Don't worry about that, you'll get there. You oh, will get there, so. you're absolutely right. See, for the fact that you've even just been inside Celtic Park, you had your picture with a strip and you, you met the secretary, do you feel like you've played a bigger part in nine in a row than Paul Slane has? <laughs> Some could say that. <laughs> Slaney, what are you saying? Hey, look. That performance, I'll never forget it. On to Ross County, getting beat 1-0, we drew one each side. A huge point for the nine in a row. It really made a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mates text me saying that I absolutely love that part. Hey, you saying your part of nine in a row. I got shocking on it. I think it's brilliant, man. I think it's brilliant. I'd, I'd milk it. I'd only want milk in the Barcelona goal. Slaney milk in the nine in a row. Absolutely. Not a problem, Slaney. Yeah. <laughs> So what did Lenny say to you, Dave, when it uh, came back that the medical hadn't been, been right? He just phoned me and kind of 
made sure I was alright. He told me not to worry about it. He was brilliant with me. Uh, he's he's gone it. He's like, we want you as soon as possible. He's like, day we need a day. And he was, I think they were still trying to push it that summer, but nothing happened really. But he was brand new with me. He was brilliant. What did uh, so did they were still trying to buy you for like less money, huh? I don't know if it was less money or what. There was, I remember the my old chief exec phoned me and explained everything what it was, but it was mad confusing scenarios that they were going to how they were going to work the money and all that, and they just couldn't agree on it. Were you saying to your agent, "Come on, you need to get this done, huh?" I was kind of on him a wee bit, I showed with it, but he's like, he's done all he could. It was kind of the clubs to agree between each other. Selena, you're in that situation. What you did? Oh, 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 oh. Si, honestly, mate, what a uh, what a situation it must be for the young man. And then for it to happen with that, but Davy boy, honestly, mate, you, you, I promise you right now, you will, you will be lifting ten in a row. And see when you look <laughs> when when you're lifting up, you know who'll be scoring the other side of the trophy. I'll be there because no word they lie, Simon. Are you ready for this? I've had talks with Peter Lawwell. And they're already arranging to bring all the ex-players back to for 10 in a row. So I will be on the pitch. And I've told them, do not have Chaddery anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously the deal falls through. And then do you know here for Celtic again? Or were they good to be after it? Or was that just completely patched? Um, can I answer you about my stuff? There was a few folk for Celtic and Celtic in the club and that text me and make sure everything went well and stuff, but then I think just after that, they were kind of keeping contact with my agent a wee bit. Just seeing how you were? Burning out me, I just seeing how it's going and keeping an eye on me, I think. So David, right, so just, bring up, just on the medical and stuff, see, you've obviously had a knee injury flared up. Did you not feel this knee problem at all up until that point, no? I didn't even feel it then. It was something I'd never then done my medical and it's came up but I seen the scan it, was, it, it says it couldn't hurt me like if you want sometimes it happens that you don't feel it but if it was like a wee flat like hanging off the cartilage I think it was and then it says if that came off it would be fucked I know because like, I was speaking to, yeah. I speaking to a physio I was speaking to a physio I think it was a physio or a doctor about it and they said that he basically must have been playing with a dodgy knee for a while but he would never have known about it because it would just be hanging on by a thread to see once Aye, that time goes, then you would know about it. So, mm. actually, honestly, mate, I, I felt I, I feel sorry for you, but um, at that moment, but, like that. Slaney says, Sai says, you, you will get back your twenty years of age, mate. You, you've got loads of time in your hands. Slaney, does the fact that Tim Williamson done the medical does that worry you? By the way, I hope you got a second opinion on it, Davy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, just on long term injuries, lads. Uh, most of us have, I know how tough it is. Day to day life. Uh, what's day to day life like when you know you're going to be out for so long? Kev, what were you like? Oh, sorry, I was. Uh, it was hard for me because I didn't know what they, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Uh, I had this hip injury, this once in a lifetime hip injury that no man, all footballers before me had retired with. So I was still going to specialists to surgeons for different opinions along the way. I was getting an operation in one place to try if it would fix it. I was getting an operation in another place to fix it. And I hadn't a clue where I was and every day just going to the gym and it was it was the, the hardest point of my life because I was my, my girlfriend at the time was pregnant with my first son and uh, I just couldn't cope with life. So I, I was really, really struggling man. It was like horrendous because I was all of a sudden I'd went from being 21 years old to making my debut in the Premiership, getting picked for Scotland, and then six weeks later being told that I had to end my career because I had a hip injury that was never going to be able to get fixed. So my head was like, how could this happen in six weeks I've become a professional international footballer and then now I'm going to end it? So it was just one of these things that um, it happened 18 months and then I remember getting back playing and the, 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 the surgeon said to me, Kevin, you're fine now, your career will get going, he says, but it'll probably take you another two years to get over it psychologically. 
And I swear mm-hmm. to God, it probably did take me another two or three years to actually get over what had happened to me and, and actually get back playing with a feeling of confidence within my hip problem. But unless you've experienced it, Si, you have, Slaney has, David's went just through it there. It's the worst thing that can possibly happen to a footballer and nobody will understand what it's like. It's, it's horrific. Slaney, what about you? What was the worst part of the day going home after you'd been in for rehab and that? Either that or hanging about with Tim Williamson. Um, either or, I'm not too sure, mate. But see, it is, mate, it is so... Um, I think the hardest bit is, si, and, and you agree, I think, that you don't feel a part of the team. So when they, right. they're coming in, having a laugh and all that, or they go and win, you just don't feel a part of it at all. Do you know what I mean, Sai? Yeah. That's horrible, mate. Sorry, I've just got to interrupt there for two seconds. See, that, that, that was the worst part for me, was the not being part of the team. I, I, I ended up finishing the season the top scorer on the team. So the next season, they'd all the billboards out, oh, your son number me is more than the strip. I was the facer, they're going to be the big number nine, going to get promoted to Premiership. I get injured. The club then go, go and get promoted to the Premiership. So I miss out on a promotion part, a promotion push. But then when I get back playing, I play the last five games we ever get relegated. So I feel like we've been relegated because it was my fault. So it was mm. fucking horrendous. Everybody's a joyous mood every week, beating everybody. And I'm just sitting there thinking, Fucking hell, man, that, that could have been me. But it is what it is. Must have been some size of fucking billboard. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, that's when I was uh, uh, 12 and a half stone, mate. Fucking ripped to fuck. God, yeah, I had that as well too. See, so getting told, like, going to a surgeon and saying, like, there's a good chance you're done. That is, right. that is worst. Oh, actually, you're nearly in tears, aren't you? Oh, sorry. Honestly, I had a drive back from Cambridge and the guy said, you bone bruising in your hip. That's you, son. Nobody can fix that. You're done. And I'm jumping a five-year uh, train journey back to Sunderland thinking, Mum, Dad, they've told me that I've got to retire. And I was like, fucking hell, man, this can't be right. But, oh, you just got to get through it, Si. It's horrendous. Hey, you're, I was the same, man. I had to go to London and the, the specialist said, like, if this operation doesn't work, that's you done. I had an, my mate had an apprenticeship waiting for me as a sparky. I, I'm on that train home from London, mate, I was texting all my pals. He said, don't worry. I'll get you an apprenticeship with a Sparky. My boss will take you on. I told him an interview, but I'll tell you again. Like next day, I went in and Tommy Bond had obviously heard the news, and he was. He says, "How are you? You all right?" And I was like, uh, "I'm fine, but my mum's in tears, man. Like, like the same as you had to phone my mum and say this could be it." And um, that day, I got him in my flat, and my mum rang us at night and said, uh, "Tommy Bond's phoned my work today." And Tommy had phoned at work and says, like, if Sai can't play again, uh, I'll give him a coaching job here, put him through his badges, he'll be a youth team coach, I'll look after him, man. So, oh, mate, it's the worst on it. Like, I used to pray at night. I used to, sli- I didn't even believe in God, mate, but I used to lie in my bed and pray that my uncle would get better, eh? Fucking murder, innit? Worst what, what, what? it really, really is, like, see that one as well, Sai, I, I got the, the ankle as well, it serves you in London, and when I came back and done the rehab, it still felt bad. And that is the worst because you're thinking at that stage, then you're thinking, I can't, this is never going to get better. Hey, oh. That is the worst thing, you're right. See, when the day's coming to you and they're saying, right, this will be it now, and then you go back to, to training and it's still sore, and you're like, what the? F-? I mean, you're actually just kidding on, it's no sore. You tell yourself it must not be sore because Quite they're telling you this is working, but oh, it's the worst day of your Fucking horrible. Just come back and then maybe one day it feels shite and you're like, is this ever going to get better? Oh, the anxiety levels when you come back thinking you're better and then all of a sudden you feel that pinch again you're like oh my god your world comes oh, crashing down again thinking it's no better it's no better are you feeling alright now though Davey are you having 100% sound I reckon i back and feel first train first few training sessions I came back and I was flying and then I can't remember so anything ages ago in this so you'll take a dip. And that, I've heard a few folk kind of say that to me and then maybe the first week I was flying and training and that and then maybe for a few weeks there was no training the way I'd like to have been but that was obviously going to happen for the length of time I'd been out. I think it's better now for see boys like Davy who've been injured for a while. I think it's the way sports science is, sports science is not is now it's, I think it's, you're much more likely to get back to where you, you were when you stopped. But see, for me, man, after being out for two and a half years, I, I thought I was never, never the same, man. You just the same thing, the hardest thing is, 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 is no actually the recovery of the injury. 
it's a recovery of the mind to get you thinking back to the way you were before the injury. And that, nah, mate, the... I, I wasn't like that at all, kid. It wasn't nah. my mind. I, just, I used to like, when I used to play as a, before I got injured, 7, 16, 17, like, people couldn't get near me. I'd just get away from them all the time, but pure felt sluggish, man. Eh? Like, oh, well, yeah, I was thinking them, it was a contact side there, like somebody coming in and hitting you, maybe a wee bit. I was kind of, uh, yeah. Have you heard that? Have you heard somebody hit you? I did play the reserves game. I think it was ah, it was my first sixty minutes or something. Something came and smashed me. So after that, I knew it was gonna sound. Uh, you're flying, young man. You'll be back in no time. Back to the Good top. Hope. Oh, we need to ask you how much were you getting at Celtic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh, uh, what is it? I just said nobody ever tells us what they're getting, do they? Right, tell us this, what more are we thinking about getting? So just so we go rough. A what? Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, signed a new contract, a mother now, Motherwell now, so was that always your thoughts, mate? Because the club looked after you. Um, uh, you a bit back. As soon as I get my first op, I think July, I think it was a few weeks after that, they offered a contract. Like, went on for a good few months and then I kind of knew I was going to sign it was just about getting things sorted but I'm kind of chilled about these things just leave it but I knew the way they treated me and helped me get back to where I was I need to kind of sign it so if anything happened in the future we were kind of protected as well How many years did you sign for? Can't even mind <laughs> Two years <laughs> Two years Boys, anything else to ask the young man? Slaying here, Kev no, sir, sir, you just go to my go every place. You start thinking about all the injuries, didn't you? <laughs> You've been quiet this, Lenny. I know, mate. I'm, I was saying to myself, I said to myself, I want it because it's obviously a Murrow player and the Murrow fans will be watching. And I said, I'm going to come on and be serious today. And um, when you get into that mode, sir, you start overthinking everything. And my goodness, when you hear the boys with the injuries. But listen, we've got a young pup down the bottom of the screen who will rise above the injuries and get to the very top, but, lads. I think so. Oh, we are going to keep championing them on this podcast as well, aren't we? We're we, we going to talk oh, about every week, man. Love it, true. Definitely. I like to hear oh, that. What about, this? what about that midfield? This for me. McGinn, Gilmore, Turnbull, Scotland free. Wow. Wow. That's right, fucking like that, Defensive mid. We Gilmore sitting, mate. We Gilmore sitting in front of them two, just banging passes into them. He's like oh, good, he's started playing. You know, you know, David. Strikers and a fucking centre half man will be flying. We Griff's back, mate. We Griff's back, innit? Aye, oh, Griff is back. Griff's back, your right side. And uh, we just need Big Grant Hanley to get sorted. <laughs> <laughs> you think you've stuff like that to a day, like Scotland squads? Because and, and, it was a time that people were shouting for you to be in the squad, wasn't it? In the summer, I was, that was in my head a lot, aye. But because I thought I was going to eat cans of holiday with the boys. Once I heard the was and I was like, oh, fuck that, I'm away. <laughs> so, Lenny, what oh. would you rather? Call up to the Scotland squad or Magaluf for the boys? Oh, Magaluf, side absolutely every day of the week, my man. <laughs> what about a Motherwell question for, for your man, that man? Dave, you see that way changing room? Can you give your yeah. best story that what's happened inside? Because going through that, mate, the... the that away changing room when you're in a youth player coming through is the maddest time you'd ever get. So, Davey, if you want to take it away and tell us a, a story that happened in there, mate. No get any in particular, really, to be honest. I just made chaos every day. Like, turn the lights off and getting, breaking all the lights with the boys. I mean, that's, Davey, that's crazy. You see that? See, um, Big Bob McHugh, I phoned him last night and he said to me, he remembers, right, if I had a bad training session, I used to come in and see it the boys. I was that bad today. Go and lock me in that boot room and batter <laughs> utter fuck at me. No one got that. you were talking about everybody growing up, mate. It was fucking back to the slain era, they were calling it. It was absolutely mental. I remember Gordon Young went like that to us. We went out to Cyprus for a fitness camp and it was a fucking shambolic mess. We fucked about for two weeks and we came back and Big Dingus, Big Dingus was like, what the fuck were you doing there? there? Fuck's sake, he's rocking back fat and looked terrible. So we youngie came in and, and youngie went like that, please. 
if one mere person smiles in the next two weeks, you'll be thrown at this club, right? So, uh, we young, he leaves the room, and uh, the boy's going for a shiver, and me and our boy Ryan Martin get bollock naked, and the two's put shiver gel all along the changing room, the two slide right along the flare, right? And as we slide, Ryan Martin's arse is hanging up in the air, and we young, he walks in and catches him. <laughs> 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 oh, it was magic, Sai. <laughs> I love the fact that you're calling Mark McGee Dingus, man. <laughs> yeah, big Dingus, honestly. He could, abs- he could engine a second, that big guy. Oh, he's a good slinny. Yeah, honestly, that, that one, like, he would just, he would just engine like that. See, if you yawned at that, I remember I yawned, he went, you fucking tired? Like that, in front of everybody? <laughs> you fucking tired? Like that, and he'd be like, you'd be staring at me like that. Get the fuck ugly. All right, you're fucks. <laughs> <laughs> big Dingus with magic. Yeah, see when you went back into Motherwell, sorry, do you, do you remember seeing Turnbull play? No, I, I don't. I remember when I went into because I was in the same changing room. Um, but honestly, so you've no. Seen naked, so you've seen him naked? Seen him naked, Sai. Do you believe it's big enough to be on this chat? Aye, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> a great lad to have about the place. I can't even remember. It was a few characters in that changing room, Sai. I terrorised, uh, to say the least. I remember my first day in. Um, I don't know if you remember, Davy. we played Naked X Factor and I was Louis Walsh. Do you remember that? I, have no, I wasn't in that day, but I've heard of it. Not on that day, but it was, it was superb. <laughs> Who was Big Dingus? Dingus with Simon Kill. Oh, I mean, it was unbelievable. Is that us? What was that, mate? I'm not allowed to say the word pizza around you. Pizza? Is that my face? He's told all the boys you weren't allowed to say pizza across your face. Oh, the fuck I've said that a few clubs actually, aye. I remember a few boys talk about pizza and a bandit for the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Right, is that us? That's us. Superb. Thanks again, lads.